Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 14th of December and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 17th of December coming off the back of a fairly roller coaster turbulent week for equity markets as well as currency markets the political backdrop for Brexit looks no less complicated even if you set aside the confidence vote that Prime Minister Theresa May was finally able to overcome draw a line under um, with respect to her leadership of the Conservative Party but ultimately given the fact that 117 MPs voted for her to go I think really highlights um, quite starkly the problems that the Prime Minister faces in getting this withdrawal agreement across the line. Uh, it still remains far from certain that um, the UK Parliament will be able to coalesce around any sort of agreement between now and the 21st of January, which ultimately is when uh, the deadline is for either voting on this deal or looking for a plan B. Now there are a number of plan B's being touted around. The biggest question at the moment is w what, if any of them, have a majority in the UK Parliament. At the moment, um, the consensus on that it appears to be between slim and none. So for the moment, the pound's got a little bit of a boost on the back of Theresa May getting past her confidence vote. It generally means that they won't be able to oust her um, for the next 12 months. But does it bring any more certainty to the Brexit proceedings? Not really. That being said, we've seen a bit of a rebound off 124.80 in the pound, and we can see that illustrated on this chart here. And what's quite interesting is that we do appear to have posted a modestly bullish reversal on the daily candle. Now, while that is modestly bullish, I think I'd want to see confirmation of this move on a move back into this triangle breakout um, around about 127.40, 127.50. This is essentially where I see the resistance levels coming in. We can drift all the way back towards 125.20, 125.30 without undermining this bullish key day reversal. So keeping a very close eye on that, we could see um, further sterling gains while above these lows at 124.80. Now obviously the big question is what's going to drive those sterling gains? And I think that really is the big question. And it could be next week's Fed meeting. Uh, the Fed is largely expected to raise rates for the fourth time this year. Um, but it's less of a done deal now than it was, say, for example, two or three weeks ago. We've come off the back of what I would suggest is some fairly weak global economic data. We had the Chinese retail sales data for November. We had Chinese industrial production data for November. We've had French PMIs for December, which have both dropped into contraction territory for services and manufacturing. And the composite is at its lowest level since February 2016. It actually beggars belief that the European Central Bank could even consider looking at raising rates at the back end of 2019 uh, against this sort of economic backdrop. It is apparent to me that ultimately the global economy is slowing down, albeit fairly modestly, but in some, in some places it is slowing down quite sharply. And actually Mario Draghi himself said in his ECB press conference that QE was the only thing that was actually causing um, uh, certain areas of economic activity to continue um, in 2018. Well, that is a startling admission for a man who is actually paring back the asset purchase program of the ECB and potentially talking about rate hikes in 2019. So I think that's wishful thinking on the part of the ECB. Markets are starting to price that out. And the big question at the moment is what the markets will start to price in for 2019 for the US Federal Reserve. For the, for the here and now, if we look at the German DAX, we can see that there is big, big resistance on around about the 11,000 area. Given that we've broken out of this sideways consolidation here, um, while we're below 11,000, I can see the prospect of further losses in the DAX towards 10,500 over the course of the next few trading sessions. This Santa rally that I think people are talking about, it may well happen, but it may well happen after a further decline towards that ten and a half thousand level in the DAX. If we look at if we look not only at the DAX but we look at say for example the FTSE one hundred here, 
we can do the same thing with this chart here. We've had a brief rebound on the FTSE 100, but again, we haven't been able to get back within this triangular consolidation breakout that we saw um, break out at the beginning of December. If I draw a trend line through the highs here, we can see this triangle breakout should project a move lower down to around about 6,600, 6,500 in the short to medium term. The only thing that would negate that is if we, the price action here, moves back in to the triangle breakout that we saw at, um, occur at the end of November. So those, those, are the key, those are the key levels on the DAX and the FTSE 100. If we look at, say for example, the pound, we've already looked at the pound. If we look at Euro dollar, we've once again broken down towards the lows that we saw uh, at the beginning of November. And again, I think that's going to be a key level for me, 112.20. I think further disappointing economic data out of the Euro area in the coming weeks. Um, is likely to put further pressure, downward pressure on the euro, always assuming, of course, that the Fed doesn't change its, gu doesn't change its guidance at its meeting on Wednesday. Now, at the moment, it's not really about whether or not the Fed raises rates in December. It's what their guidance and the dot plot path will be for 2019. Markets are slowly pricing out the possibility that we're going to get two or three rate hikes next year from the Fed. If anything, I will be surprised if we get one. Given the direction of travel for economic data globally, I think there is an outside chance the Fed could cut next year. I think the earliest that's going to happen is probably Q4. Markets are not currently pricing that in. I think it's still quite some time before we get there. But ultimately, I wouldn't rule out the possibility that 12 months from now, the Fed could be cutting rates. And if that does happen, we could well see a little bit of dollar weakness start to play out, even though we're getting quite a bit of dollar strength at the moment. I think it's been fairly... I think it's been fairly instructive if we look at, say, for example, dollar yen, and we look at the fact that it's not really been able to get much above this trend line resistance from these peaks here. The, 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 every resultant rally from uh, the lows has been slightly lower, and the price action is starting to compress. At the moment, we're above the cloud, um, and while we're above the cloud, um, we're just about clinging on to the uptrend, but if that cloud breaks, then we could come back to around about 110. So keep an eye on this resistance line here, which comes in just above 113.80, 114.00, and then obviously good support around about 112 and a half. Um, what else are we looking out for next week? We've got UK inflation. Um, UK economic data continues to look fairly positive. Wage growth um, increased to 3.3% um, in the three months. Uh, to November, so that was that was sorry three months to October, so that's fairly positive. Inflation um, could well fall back to 2.3% in November, given the sharp decline that we've seen in oil prices. We've also got CPI um, for November for the European Union. That's the headline number, and that could well fall back towards the ECB target rate of 2% from the 2.2% that we saw in October. But I'm more interested in core prices, and core prices still remain very weak. The highest core prices have been in the last um, nine years has been 1.2%. 1, 1, so they're around about 1%. Inflation still remains very benign. We've also got Bank of Japan rate decision against a slowing Japanese economy, a 2.5% contraction in Q3. Unlikely to see really anything from the Bank of Japan next week. Status quo on the 20th. We've got re UK retail sales for November on the 20th, and I'll be paying particular attention to them uh, to see whether or not Black Friday sales have really prompted UK consumers to really up their spending for November after a disappointing October. And we've also got Canadian CPI and retail sales, as well as earnings from FedEx in the US, and they're usually a decent barometer of consumer demand. Um, Amazon Prime shopping and that sort of thing, if we get decent numbers from FedEx, that would suggest that the US consumer is still ordering um, quite a lot online. So that's it for the week beginning the 17th of December. Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.